Feltrin, Audio Director at Precursor Games. And I'm Sean Thompson, Technical Director at Precursor Games. And today we're going to present you a walkthrough of Shadow of the Eternals and give you a behind the scenes look at how we utilize the CryEngine 3 uh, on a technical level and achieve what you see and hear in the demo. Hope you enjoy it. So here we are inside the CryEngine 3 editor and this is the software in which we create the world of the game. Right, so what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at some, some visual aspects. Uh, Geo will talk about some audio. Uh, we can see, you know, there's lots of little markers in the game and so you can tell that this is the editor that we're playing and, um, and we're still able to interact even though we have uh, a fairly large area, you know, visible. Uh, one of the things we really like about CryEngine is it is highly optimized. You're also seeing the uh, amazing weather system going on in this engine, which is built in directly into CryEngine 3. Um, you're seeing the thunderstorm, uh, which is really adding to the atmosphere of this level. Um, from an audio standpoint, I am attaching what are called sound actors to each time a lightning strike hits. and it's drawing from a sound bank, a randomized container of thunder sounds uh, inside a, a, a audio middleware tool called FMOD. And what FMOD does is sort of bridge the gap between the sound designer and the audio programmer. And speaking of the uh, tools that we're using, one of the big things with CryEngine was it is mostly a self-sustaining package. There's really not a lot of middleware. FMOD is, and Scaleform are the only two extras that are supported and they do a very specific job. Um, so we really, really like that. We have a bunch of different things we can show here. Um, one thing that CryEngine does really well is our physics. We can kind of look here and we can see our tapestries, right? They're, you know, a slight sway to them. We've got some, some physics in them right now. Um, our chandeliers as well. You can see there's some swinging. And these are, this was mainly us playing with some of their their systems, evaluating them, getting a feel for you know how they they can work to, to add those little subtleties to the level. That one of the other big things, and this is something that the team over at Crytek does better than anyone, is really the visuals. This whole level is dynamically lit. There's no baking going on whatsoever. Um, so when we look at some of the lights around here, right? You know we've got lights coming off the torches. They're flickering. All right, so we're able to animate the lights. I was, that's a really nice feature. One of the things that, if we look on the ground, we see the stained glass coming through on the windows. Yeah, so one of the things that we had to add to the CryEngine is uh, a new third-person camera system, because that's something that, that's going to be very specific to our game and the way we do things. Uh, out of the box, you know, we had a basic orbit camera, and, and while that's great, it's good for player control, uh, with Shadow of the Eternals, we want a variety of environments. So a couple of the uh, design goals that we had were always keep the player in control. So you can see as he walks up the stairs or transitions that the camera <coughs> control changes, but the player is still able to look around. Now for an area like the staircase, where it's such a narrow environment, we didn't want to give the player an orbit camera because you run into all sorts of issues with collisions with the walls and not being able to see, whereas we want the player to be presented with the exact view that they need while still maintaining some control of what they want to look at. Here we're back into our free orbiting camera um, and there is no cut in cases where we need to cut, we will, but we're trying to keep it as seamless as possible. Keep player control, but at the same time use the camera to influence both the mood of the game and to tell the player visual clues. Yeah, you'll notice as we were going up the stairs into the study that the monk chanting music track became more uh, muffled and muted. So when you're at the top of the, uh, the cathedral in the study, you don't really hear it as much as you did uh, as when you were in the uh, apps. And that is, I don't expect everybody to really notice that thing, but uh, subconsciously it really adds to the immersion, that interactivity with audio. And that is done with FMOD, and really the possibilities with FMOD are endless. 
what it does, it allows the sound designer to set parameters uh, for the game engine to read. And these parameters can be anything, uh, such as uh, the state that the player is in, or how many enemies are in the room during an action sequence. And, uh, you know, a lot of people might think that, as a sound designer, uh, we were moving faders, uh, moving faders to mix the game, but no, what's really happening is the game engine is reading those parameters and essentially mixing itself. Because uh, the game is going to be different every time you play it. It has to be on the fly, adapting to what the player is doing. And uh, FMOD really allows, uh, is very intuitive in doing that. With the visuals, you know, we are able to, out of the box, just drop assets in and start applying materials and shaders and have them already fully optimized um, with the great suite of options that exist in CryEngine's material editor. But at the same time, when we do want a very particular effect, we're able to extend that. A good example of this is the windows in the study. If we go over and have a look at the windows, you can see this is a custom shader written by us, put into the cry engine. Um, we've got some motion on the trees in the background. We've got water droplets, and we've got some slight reflection in there. All these things we were, we were able to combine and basically just build on what CryEngine already had. Yeah, you'll notice when you go to the windows too that you can hear the rain getting louder, uh, the spatter on the windows. And uh, that's another uh, result of FMOD's interactive audio system. But what you do is you draw uh, volumes near these windows, and then as you get closer to them, uh, the radius uh, tells the engine to uh, how loud to play these the, the rainfall. One of the things that CryEngine really gives us and, and is a big advantage is this runs all, from DirectX 9 all the way up through DirectX 11, so we feel that you know, we're prepared for either the current generation or the next generation. A lot of the features that we've shown you know, are implemented in DirectX 11 and are using techniques that, that will be commonplace on the Xbox One, on the PS4, and, and already commonplace on a lot of the PCs. So, you know, we, we feel very good from that standpoint that we're going to be able to support a very wide range of configurations, whether they be consoles, whether they be VCs, um, and make gamers happy with the performance and the look of the game they play, no matter what platform they're playing on. So one thing that uh, Kevin Gordon brought up in his talk, but we, we want to go into a little bit deeper, is we have tessellation and displacement. So if we look at the walls here, you can see that the bricks are popping out and you know it, it's got a really nice effect. If we go into wireframe mode, right, you can see that the, the walls are done with two different mechanisms. One's highly tessellated. So we've turned on tessellation and allowed the displacement to actually move the bricks around. The other one is a technique that the guys over at Crytek have come up with um, which is called parallax occlusion mapping, which gives that same effect. But the nice thing is we don't lose the original silhouette. So we can see displacement going on, but we won't get the cracks in the geometry. So we're able to pick and choose which of these techniques is most appropriate for the geometry involved. And both of them perform very well. We've, we've done a lot of tests with both and we're really happy with the results. Oh, well, thanks everybody for listening. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to showing you more in the future. All right, and if you have any questions, you, um, email us or ask us on the forums.